This video is kind of a survival guide to medical school in Italy, especially if you're studying in the English program. So I'm going to go over the biggest differences between other international courses, why they're actually massively problematic differences that seem good at the start, then I'm going to go over how you're going to avoid them and I'm going to finally end the video on some quick tips that I've collected from different other medical students that they wish they had when they got accepted and before they enrolled. So just before I quickly get started, I just wanted to let you know that we started a newsletter. If you want to keep up to date with any sort of news or announcements, whether it's about medical school or the exam, I advise you to go and sign up. Let's start with the massive, massive differences that are honestly quite shocking, especially if you're not used to the system here. The first one is that no one is going to hold your hand. There are no tests, there are no quizzes, there is no homework, there is no continuous assessment, there are no projects, there are no group assignments, there is absolutely nothing. No one is holding your hand, making sure you're staying on top of your studies, making sure that you're keeping up to date. You just have one huge exam for every subject at the end of the semester. The only thing other than the exam is that there is usually a 66% attendance rate that is mandatory by law. So some universities might not enforce this, but it is there. And actually some universities might have an even higher amount. The next thing is that you get to plan your own exams, which means that there are no mandatory set times that you have to be prepared and do an exam. There will be multiple dates throughout the year and you kind of schedule when you feel prepared and when you want to do that exam. There tends to be seven to eight dates every single year. However, some universities such as Padova give less attempts and it's kind of up to you to book when you want to do it and actually show up and finish the exam. There is no repercussions if you don't show up. If you don't feel ready, you can just schedule it for later and you can actually reject your score if you don't like it. And before you think, oh, but if I'm not doing any exams, how can I proceed to the next year? And the truth is you can actually proceed to the next year if you sit the minimum amount, which is usually two out of six exams in first year. The only exception to this rule is Pavia. You are required to sit everything in the same year to progress or else you have to repeat the year. But other than Pavia, all of the other universities allow you to reattempt exams uh, up to a few times, maybe in Turin, it's like three times in other universities, it's unlimited times. But basically you schedule your own exams, you do them when you want to. And finally, there are no required textbooks. In a lot of universities around the world, you might be required to buy the professor's textbook, you might be required to buy five different textbooks for one subject, and you only solve like three questions out of it. Here in Italy, there are absolutely no required or mandatory textbooks. They might suggest you some. Some professors might have like recommended reading or the textbook that they suggest that you can study from, but this is in no way required uh, to buy or to use. And usually, actually, most of the universities will provide PDFs of these books through their library portal, where you can like legally download them and annotate them or use them on your tablet. Now let's go over why these differences seem on paper like they might be great and you have a lot of freedom, but they're actually traps and they are going to be so, so, so awful if you fall into these traps. I'm going to now deconstruct every single difference and tell you what's wrong with it. To start out with the fact that no one is holding your hand and no one is giving you continuous tests and assessments and, you know, quizzes every single week and projects, uh, it seems like it's a good thing, but the problem is no one is making sure that you're actually studying and staying on time and are you keeping up? Are you understanding the subject? You know, so what tends to happen is you get to the final exam and you haven't kept up all semester and you think that you can actually cram everything in a week and then show up to the exam and pass it or even better yet, since you can schedule your own exams, you feel like you're not ready and you don't even show up. And so no one is checking in on you. No one is making sure that you are still learning. You're still understanding everything. Uh, this is a huge problem. Like on paper, it might sound great that you don't have all of these extra responsibilities throughout the semester, but this really puts a lot of responsibility on you and ensuring and making sure that you have to stay on top of your own study and your own workload. That might not sound like that big of a deal because you can just study right before the exams come up, but I want to show you this PDF from when I did biochemistry. This is only me practicing drawing structures, not my notes, not the lectures, not the book, literally just the amount of practice it took to draw the structures and learn them, okay? This is 170 pages, 170 pages of just drawing molecules and structures to try and learn them. If you think that it's great that you don't have to study throughout the semester and no one cares and you're going to do fine in exams, I would really urge you to think again. This is not the positive that you think it is. And this follows on to the next point of being able to schedule your own exams and not showing up if you don't want to. Like you can pass to the next year by only passing two subjects in first year, but this is massively problematic because second year is built based on the fact that you understand and learned everything in first year, right? 
second year, third year, fourth year, all of the progressive years are based on the assumption that you have learned and understand everything from the previous year. Now, if you haven't studied all semester and decided to skip the exam and put it off to next year because you already did your minimum and you can continue with your class and you know you don't feel ready, but if you totally study, you can totally make it so it totally doesn't matter. The problem is you're not going to be able to follow what is happening in the classes in second year. So you're going to fall behind on those classes. And instead of being able to study real time for what's going on in that class, you're going to be lost on that. You're not going to want to study the previous stuff because the exam isn't there yet and you just want to focus on that semester stuff. And what happens is it starts piling up. There's this like really good traffic analogy. What happens is when you have one slowdown or you have one thing that you didn't pass and you go to the following year before doing it, it will affect everything behind it until you catch up. So it might seem great that you can schedule your own exams and perhaps even reject your grades and continue onwards, but I am telling you it is going to make your life 10 times as hard. Because in order to graduate, you're still going to have to do those exams. It's not like you magically don't get to do them. You just have to do them at a later date. The problem is that graduating here on time is quite rare, not because like the exams are super, super hard and the teachers are mean and they fail you, but because students keep putting off doing their exams and then they fall behind and realize how hard it is to catch up when you're meant to be doing third year pathology and you still haven't passed physiology and you don't even understand the basics of what's going on in like cell transport because you didn't do chemistry yet. This is massively problematic and it seems great because you always get to feel prepared for an exam, you get to reschedule it, you get to have high grades because you keep rejecting your grades. But the thing is, it just keeps piling on and on and on. And before you know it, you're going to be absolutely buried. The final thing that also seems like an advantage, like the fact that you don't have to buy any textbooks, I personally think this is great, but you have to be aware of the fact that this makes synthesizing information very, very hard. Especially if you're coming from a university background where you were always given like problem sets, you were always given textbooks, what chapters to study, like what is going to be on the exams. This is going to seem really, really difficult to you. So it might seem great that you don't ever have to pay for any textbooks, but the fact that there are no textbooks kind of makes it hard for especially a lot of Western university-based students to adapt to this new system. And sometimes, unfortunately, the syllabus of the course and what the professor covers and what is on the exam might not match up. So you might feel a little bit lost on where you're going to actually gather information from. They might give slides, they might not give slides, they might be in Italian, they might not be in Italian, they might be only pictures. Like it really depends on each of the professors what level of information they're going to give to you on your slides and like whether they're going to give you slides at all. So it's kind of very difficult to synthesize information when you first come here and you have no idea how to study, you have no idea how to approach exams, especially oral exams, because the thing to keep in mind is that all of the medical schools in Italy require oral exams, with the exception of Padova, they are currently on a written only system with a few oral exams thrown in, but all other medical universities in Italy will eventually require oral exams. So it's going to be kind of hard switching from knowing exactly what textbook, what chapter, what question sets to use to just being given a syllabus, lectures, and then expecting to be able to do oral exams on them. But don't worry, I'm going to go over how to survive all of these things that I just mentioned. So the way you're going to make it through the hellhole that is the uh, Italian medical school system and just university system in general is to understand this idea of non-negotiable. This is going to be something that you set as a rule for yourself. So starting with the fact that no one holds your hand and no one is checking, you need to make a non-negotiable rule that you are going to show up to all of your lectures. It does not matter if the professor is crap, it does not matter if you can do more than what he covers in that class, it does not matter if it's boring, right? If your university offers the online lectures and you can watch it in double speed, you should still show up to the class and study something else while you're there or study what the professor is doing on topic and then rewatch that double speed later. But the point is that showing up to all of your classes, even though it's not required, is really going to get you into the mindset of certain things are not negotiable. Like you just have to show up, even if you're gonna study something else, even if you're going to cover exactly what the professor is covering, but not pay attention, you should definitely show up. The other th reason why I think like showing up should be non-negotiable is because if you actually consistently put a little bit of work during classes, it's going to completely change your trajectory for exam time. This comes in with advice I've gotten from other medical students to give you guys is that kind of know how you're studying system is, know what works for you note-taking wise. So <laughs> one of the biggest things was don't cheap out. If you prefer having printed books to take notes on the books during class, do that. If you want to print out the slides and you think that they should be in color but it's really expensive, maybe it might be worth investing or better yet, if you can use a tablet, 
that's fine. Uh, I know a lot of students who just use pen and paper and they write questions while the class is ongoing to what they don't understand. And then when they go home, they go and fill this out. That's absolutely fine. But the fact that you're going to show up, you're going to see what level of detail that the professors go into, and you're going to figure out a system that works for you. This is going to make a massive, massive, massive difference. So by making showing up non-negotiable and just paying a little bit of attention in class, even if it's just to jot down like a question that you think the professor might ask during an exam. If you just do this and then go home and answer those questions by looking them up and then just read them once a month, you are going to be 90% ahead of your class when it comes to exam time. Like, trust me, that's all it requires. It requires the tiniest little bit of consistency, just being non-negotiable about it. And you're not going to have the problem where you're going to show up to the exam and you're going to try to cram one week beforehand and you're not going to sit it and you're going to fall behind. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be writing a few more articles on how you should approach exams in Italian medical schools and how you can study for them. So I would really advise you to either sign up for the newsletter to not miss it or to turn on your notifications uh, for this channel so that when we make a video about it, you don't miss it. The other thing that you're going to start making non-negotiable is your exam schedule. So what I mean by this is even though you have a few dates available, about one month before the session, you're going to sit down and you're going to pick what dates to sit what exams from that semester. These dates are now non-negotiable and non-movable. You're going to pretend like you're in a different university in a different country where you have to show up to the exam. Even if you don't feel prepared, even if you did one hour of study and nothing else, even if you know you're going to catastrophically fail and embarrass yourself, you have to show up to the exam. Because if you don't show up, you're going to be in the exact same situation as if you failed. The difference is you're now going to have experience for the exam. You're gonna see what type of questions they ask. You're gonna be able to listen in on other students doing their oral exams and understand what constitutes a good answer. You're going to get the experience. The other reason why it has to be non-negotiable is because if you show up and you fail, you are going to learn your lesson that you can't leave it until a week before an exam to like kind of study and kind of cram, okay? So these two concepts are so, so important. You have to treat exam dates as if they they are immovable and you have to have to do them. Finally, the textbook problem, although I don't find this a problem, I don't like studying from textbooks, I think it's absolutely fine as long as you find something that works for you. But the good news is, in Italy there is this amazing system called Spobine, which are kind of like transcripts of all of your classes. These are prepared by students where one person will record the class, then transcribe it, someone else will add diagrams and additional explanations, and then one person will go through it and check all of the information, it's like correct, blah 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 and they release a system like transcriptions with additional information of exactly what's covered in the class. In my opinion, and in a lot of opinions of Italian students who have been doing this for decades, this is the best way to study because it's going to have absolutely everything that the professor has gone in in class. It will give you an idea of what level of depth you need to learn stuff in, like how detailed does everything need to be? Because the truth is like Italian medical school is incredibly detail oriented, right? It is a lot heavier on theory. So you need to be aware of the fact that like you are going to have to learn a lot more information, a lot more details. It's going to be a lot more theory based. The Spobine are actually really, really great way to learn and understand what's going on. Ideally, you will have already been paying attention in class. So when you read over the transcripts, it's not going to be brand new to you. But this is a really, really great resource to use. And sometimes, you know, obviously the professor's slides might be implemented into, into this bobina. So usually the way you get access to this is by asking upper years. If the upper years have not yet prepared them, this is a great opportunity for you and your classmates to go over some early collaboration by starting a spobina system where you are going to create these transcripts working together in teams of three, you know, divide up the workload, really like work collaboratively to create this resource because every single student who comes after you that has access to this in your course is going to be so grateful to you. No textbooks might seem like a problem. Obviously you can still use textbooks to study, but I will just tell you that it won't give you a good idea of what level of detail you need to know, what's relevant, what's not relevant. So a really much better thing to do is to either find Spobina from the uh, upper years or to create your own Spobina. Now we're going to do some some, like rapid fire tips based on everything that I've collected and some of the questions that you guys have asked over on the Instagram through stickers and DMs etc. The fact that your exams are oral usually means that there might not be any past papers so that you can see what type of questions were asked. So what the best thing to do is to start compiling questions from all of the students who sat a subject on a certain date. You just ask them to submit what they were asked and you put it all into a doc for that subject. And then next session or next year, whenever students do that exam, they go to this original document and they fill it out with the questions they got asked. So essentially you are starting to collect a past questions, 
even though it was an oral exam, you just write down the topics that the professor asked. Another thing is show up on exam dates even if you don't plan on doing the exam. Say I made my non-negotiable date at the end of June, but there's an exam date early June, show up at early June and listen in on the oral exams. See what questions the professors are asking. See how like students are answering. Are they answering detailed? Are they answering basic? Are the professors asking more questions? Just show up, have an idea for the exam. Even if you don't feel prepared, but you're going to try it, try and sit the exam because it will give you so much experience and so much knowledge about what to expect when you're actually ready to go and do it. Next thing is also take advantage of professors office hours. Usually in your student guide, you'll be able to find what time they have open office hours at and you can just show up and say that you're not used to this exam modality you don't know what type of questions to expect you don't know how to approach this go and talk to the professors I think most of the time you'll find that your professors are incredibly helpful I know that in Sapienza our professors care so much about us passing they're strict on us and they want a lot of detail but they are always there for additional help you can go to your professor's office hours you can tell them that you haven't been in true an oral exam so you don't know what type of questions to expect how would they advise you to to prepare for it, what they want you to actually know. Do they want you to understand concepts? Do they want you to know details? Really like take advantage of your professor's office hours. On the topic of asking help, a lot of universities will offer counseling. I know that Sapienza offers counseling to its students. If you are struggling mentally or with exams or with anything, just reach out for help. Don't ever not ask for help. If you don't ask, you don't receive and you don't know how much help you can get if you don't ask. So if you're feeling like really mentally unwell and you're kind of overworked and overloaded, do seek out counseling services in the university. I'm sure they would be very, very happy to try and find you some support. Try to cultivate an environment of teamwork and collaboration as early as you can in your class. Sometimes in some universities and some classes, it happens that the group starts to develop little niches of students where they stop talking to each other. Sometimes one group finds out information about a professor and they won't share it with the rest of their class. This is unfortunately just human nature. And sometimes that makes people very closed off from collaborating. If the second you start, you start encouraging teamwork at the start and have people volunteer to do things like create a shared drive, find out if you can reach to upper years. Are there Italian students that would be willing to help the English students with documents? Try to encourage like collaboration as early as you can because if you set the mood and the theme at the very start that you are going to be a helpful and nice class and everyone is going to work together that will shape your next six years so try to get in on it as early as you can please also remember that studying all the time isn't healthy either i know that there is this culture of over glorifying work and making it seem like you should study all the time because you're a medical student and that's just what you should do but this is not correct you will burn out you need to have work-life balance and a part of this is socializing it's going and doing events activities hobbies sports you will have definitely, definitely enough time to do all of these things if you allow yourself. So please make sure that you are prioritizing socializing and making friends and hanging out with people and making connections. You're going to be in medical school for six years. You might as well start investing into your relationships now. Sometimes it can be hard to make friends uh, when you don't speak the language. So please, 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 please start learning Italian as soon as you can, as soon as you can, even before you get here, it will drastically change your life. But other than that, a great place to make friends is to actually go to tandem nights. In Italy, tandem nights are usually this event. It might be a dinner, it might be an aperitivo where you meet up for two or three hours. The first half of the night, people will speak English and the second half of the night, people will speak Italian or vice versa. And the idea is that by talking to people in their native language, both parties or whoever shows up, everyone will benefit because the Italians get to speak with English native speakers and practice. And you know, the, the English speakers can then talk to the Italians in Italian and start improving it. And you can make really great friends through this. Some other events might be like expat uh, outings. Usually every city will have an expats in that city. A Facebook group and you can join that and go to their activities and outings. There are plenty of festivals. There are so many ways to make friends, uh, especially with the Erasmus students. If you go to your Erasmus association, there will be plenty of international students who want to make friends as well because they're arriving for only one year or one semester. So it's really all about creating your own social experiences, but this is definitely something that we all think that you should prioritize. It's not good just to be buried in your studies. It's not good to like kind of cut off yourself from social interaction, even though it might be hard to make friends at first by becoming closer with your classmates, asking if they know anyone in the city, you know, organizing group events, going to the expat groups, going to tandem nights, joining Italian schools. You're really going to be able to increase your surface area and chance of meeting people that you can become friends with. Finally, again, as in every video, please start learning Italian. I cannot emphasize this enough. It will drastically change 
will change your life. If you think we missed anything or something that you're wondering about, like you already got your acceptance and you don't know what to expect, please let me know in the comments and we'll add it to an article and make sure that everything is answered. Or you can, you know, ask us on Instagram or on the Facebook and yeah, please let us know. We hope that was helpful and hope you enjoy your next six years here.